Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Allen and welcome to Root Rot 101. Today we're going to talk all about root rot, what it is and how to spot it. I'm also going to show you how to remove it and how to prevent it coming back in the future. So if that sounds really good to you, then keep on watching. So what exactly is root rot? Well, root rot is a pretty common disease found in both indoor and outdoor plants. This disease essentially causes necrosis of the roots of a plant, i.e. the rot. This rotting occurs when the outer layer of the root that is responsible for nutrient and water absorption, also known as the epidermis, dies off, leaving the inner tissue exposed. This leaves the root cortex unprotected and as a result, it also succumbs to the disease. It's pretty nasty. This disease can devour an entire root system and even progress up the meristem of the plant, resulting in plant death. There is some good news though. If you catch it early, your plant can make a full recovery. So what specifically causes root rot? Because if we can identify the cause, we may be able to also identify ways of preventing it in the future. There's a few ways that root rot can actually occur. The most common method is the overwatering of a houseplant where the soil stays too wet for too long and essentially root rot develops. But did you know that root rot can occur from severely underwatering a plant? If a plant's roots completely die out from underwatering to the point of desiccation, and then we water the plant again, those roots will rot and there is a chance of the rot persisting throughout the stem of the plants. So if we underwater the plant completely and then we saturate those roots, you are creating a really nice mushy environment for those dead roots to just rot away. And of course, they're still attached to the plant, which makes it really dangerous. And that is how the root rot can spread. Root rot can also occur shortly after importing plants from overseas, from places such as Thailand or Indonesia. Importing plants in this way poses the risk of roots drying out completely whilst in transit, as well as root death from strong chemical insecticides that the roots are dipped in prior to shipping out the plant from the grower. Roots can appear fine on arrival when this happens, but root rot can still occur within a couple of weeks later. It really does depend. Basically, in a nutshell, if your roots remain too wet or they suffer severe damage, they are susceptible to rot. But let's get a little bit more specific on what is causing this rot. Root rot can be caused by a variety of viruses, bacteria, and fungi. The bacteria and pathogens responsible for root rot are already found on your houseplants. That's right, they are always there. It's not something that you catch, they are always there. Just the same as almost any surface in your home where it harbors bacteria. It's very much the same thing. This in itself isn't actually a problem because the effects of the bacteria are balanced out by the plant's natural defenses. Much in the same way, if you want to think about it this way, that we have an immune system which protects us from various illnesses and potential diseases. It's very much the same thing. However, the pathogens responsible for the rot thrive in moisture, which is why overwatering or insufficient drainage can dramatically increase the chances of rot. Wet soil can suffocate the roots of a plant by dramatically lowering the oxygen level. Yes, believe it or not, the roots of our plants, much like us, need oxygen in order to function. Now, root rot can be passed from plant to plant via spores. These spores can either be airborne or they can be transferred from various insects living in the substrate, including fungus gnats. Yes, I know, as if we didn't hate them enough already. So you may have had experience with fungus gnats. They usually thrive in excess moisture in the substrate also. This can occur in lecker as well as soil, by the way. I have personal experience with that. Gnats can survive quite nicely in lecker as well. So unfortunately, we're not safe from that. I know everyone hates fungus gnats, but you'll probably hate them even more when I tell you that they are a vector for root rot. That's right, the feet of fungus gnats are what actually transfer the pathogens from one plant to another. So the question is, can root rot from one plant effectively spread and contaminate another plant? And the simple answer is yes. Spores from an infected plant can contaminate another plant. 
However, please remember that root rot absolutely cannot take hold on a new plant unless those ideal conditions are met, i.e. excess moisture in this case. So if you have any spores or pathogens transferred from a plant that has rot and it contaminates a plant that has well-draining substrate, so it's not too wet, there is a very, very low chance that this new plant will actually get any root rot at all. Let's talk a little bit more about the actual symptoms of root rot, so how to spot it. There are a few ways to spot root rot on a plant. Usually the telltale signs are found on the roots themselves, but if the rot is more severe, the plant matter above soil level can show various signs of stress as well. So it is a bit of an indicator. But if the root rot is more severe, the plant matter above soil level can show various signs of stress. First, let's look at the symptoms found on the plant itself, i.e. everything there is above soil level. If your house plant is showing any signs of the following, if it's showing signs of slow growth, maybe yellowing leaves, anything like that, if the soil is always very, very wet in conjunction with this, and the plant may or may not have a floppy or wilted appearance, mushy stems, or even black spots on the leaves of the plant, you might have some rot there. It is important to note that these symptoms individually can also be a symptom of other issues. For example, yellow leaves and a floppy appearance could also mean underwatering. This is why it's a good idea to check to see if the soil is too wet and to further investigate the root system. If your plant is experiencing any of these signs, it is time to expect the roots as it's possible that the plant is indeed suffering from any rot. Now, once you get a clear look at the roots of the plant, it's very important to check the color. If your plant is in water or a soil-free substrate such as Lekka, healthy roots are usually a color between white and beige. They can appear a darker brown though if they are in soil, but they should not appear darker than a medium brown shade. That is a warning sign. It's worth a quick mention at this point, of course, that plants can have red or pink roots. These are also healthy roots and this is totally normal. Of course, it depends on your plant. Again, roots can appear browner than usual if they are in soil and coir specifically actually can often stain the roots, making them appear slightly darker than usual. However, this isn't too much of a problem to be honest with you because a plant that has root rot is quite noticeable in terms of the roots. The roots often feel very mushy to the touch to the point where they can easily pull off in your hands and the root can give off a very unpleasant odor. It's, it's not nice if you've ever smelt it. So we've talked about where root rot comes from. We've talked about spotting it and identifying if our plant is any cause for concern, i.e. does our plant have any root rot? But now we need to talk about the removal. So we've checked our plants and we've found rotting roots. Now what do we do? So the first thing we should do is make sure that our root system is free from any substrate at all. This is honestly much easier to do if you're growing plants in leca or perlite, but if you are growing your plants in soil, then you should aim to remove as much soil from the roots as humanly possible. The next thing we need to do is cut the diseased roots off, but we must be careful to only cut off the parts that have rotted. This is very important. If the root rot has only occurred halfway along the root, we're only going to cut off halfway along the root with a couple of centimeters overlap, just in case there's some infection that we haven't caught yet. What you should not do is cut the root all the way back to the base of the plant, as this root, this remaining root, is potentially still healthy. So we absolutely do not want to remove more than we have to. If you're unsure which roots need to be removed, it's a good idea to gently pull on them because if they do need to be removed, they will very, very likely come off in your hands. If you're unsure about cutting the roots right away, then it's a good idea to use this method to remove most of the rot. Then afterwards, of course, we can tidy all of this up with a pair of sterile scissors when we're finished. Now that we've removed all of the rot, we're going to dip the roots in a 3% hydrogen peroxide mix with water to a ratio of either 1 to 1 or 2 to 1. Use 1 to 1, of course, if you're brave enough. If in any doubts, use 2 to 1. There is no need to leave the roots to soak. A quick dip is all we really need to kill off any bacteria or pathogens that are still on this plant. If you don't have any hydrogen peroxide, you can always use bleach. This works out at around about four to six drops of bleach to a liter of water. That's one quart of water for those who are in America. 
you can optionally treat the plant with a fungicide at this point as well. Now that we've removed all of our rot, it's time to repot the plant. Now this is very, very, very important. Do not repot the plant into the same batch of substrate as it is contaminated. If you're using lecker, either sterilize it or discard it completely and use fresh lecker. The same goes for your preferred potting mix. Also, clean and sterilize the pot that the plant was previously in if you're going to use the same pot. If not, obviously get a new pot. If there is a substantial loss of root, please consider downsizing your pot to make sure that the plant won't get overwatered once you've repotted. So it's a great idea to always pot a plant according to the root mass, the root ball. Now the next one might not be so obvious and I don't really see people talk about this, but do not fertilize your plant. And I'm gonna tell you why. So if we deny our houseplant any further nutrients, it will actually trick the plant into placing more of its energy into growing a larger root system than growing foliage or anything else. And it will do this in order to source the missing nutrients, which is exactly the effect that we want in this situation. If it was me, I would hold off feeding for around about eight weeks. Now this next step, not a lot of people are gonna follow or even like, but I'm gonna recommend it anyway because it is the best chance of survival for your house plant but it is a good idea at this point to remove some of the leaves of the plant it might seem counterproductive but it's likely that the newly diminished root system will not be able to provide enough moisture to sustain the entire plant this will actually place even further stress on the plant at this point it's actually a good idea to remove an amount of foliage proportional to the amount of root that you've just lost so for example if we just lost one third of our root system we should ideally be removing one third of the foliage. Now then, I know a lot of people won't feel comfortable doing that. So the alternative but similar advice here from me to you is to seize the opportunity to take a cutting of your plant if applicable. Not only does this now relieve the additional stress on the root system, the diminished root system, but it also acts as an insurance policy or a second wind, if you will, if the plant should fail to recover or die for any reason. From this point onwards, it's simply a waiting game for the plant to recover. So we know what root rot is, we know how to spot it, we know how to remove it, and we've now repotted our plant. But of course, the thing we're all worried about is what happens in the future? How can I make sure this horrible thing does not happen again? So now that we've successfully removed all of the root and replanted our houseplant, let's focus on preventing any more cases of this happening in the future. Here are some things that I would personally go about doing. If you are using lecker, this is a big one, please know that root rot mainly occurs when the water you're using has a low pH or a low amount of oxygen. So try to keep your pH between 5 and 6.5 depending on your plant's requirements. I know that might seem slightly acidic, but that's actually what plants thrive in. They don't necessarily thrive in a neutral solution of about seven. Also, do not overfeed your houseplants because too much fertilizer can burn the root system and kill the roots. Once the roots are dead, they very often rot whilst they're still attached to the rest of the plant, and this rot can very, very easily spread up the stem of the plant. This does account for soil as well as lecker. That's not lecker specific. Please be careful when you feed your plants. Another thing, do not reuse any old infected soil for any reason at all. Soil taken from a rotted root system is contaminated with all of the pathogens that are needed for rot. And if you do the wrong thing again with a separate plant using the substrate, this will spread to further plants as we have covered already. Obviously, that is contingent on the conditions being correct, but it's still a risk. So unless you have a way of sterilizing your old substrate, of course, then if I were you, I would dispose of your substrate and do not use it for anything else. There are a couple of products that you can use to prevent root rot from happening to any of your other house plants. Whether they've had it before or not, it doesn't matter. These products are really, really good to prevent any further rot. The first awesome ingredient I'd like to tell you about is cinnamon. So cinnamon is not only a natural fungicide, but it is also a pest deterrent and it can even be used as a rooting agent. Sprinkle some on soil to repel various insects 
or you can go one step further and make yourself a DIY fungal spray bottle to ward against mushrooms and other things growing on top of your soil. Mushrooms are not so good on your soil. Yes, it means there's nutrients in there, but of course those mushrooms growing will leach those nutrients. So it's not something you really want. I don't particularly suppose anyone finds them pretty, so it's good to keep those at bay. Mix some cinnamon and warm water. Stir the mixture and leave this to steep overnight. The next day, strain out all of the cinnamon and pour the water into a clean spray bottle that hasn't been used for anything that could potentially damage the plant, i.e. don't use an old cleaning spray bottle. You can buy spray bottles from places like Amazon at very low cost. You now have yourself an antifungal soil spray to ward against any random mushrooms that may pop up. While that is not fully treating root rot, it is treating the fungi and other spores that help manifest root rot. The thing that is really good for zapping root rot is undoubtedly hydrogen peroxide. This seems like it's going to be really aggressive. I understand from the name we think, oh my goodness, that sounds really harsh. but. A mixture of just 3% hydrogen peroxide with equal volume of water actually has a few benefits for your houseplant. Would you believe it? You can use a weaker version of this spray on foliage, but we're going to concentrate on the roots. So the benefits of hydrogen peroxide. The first thing it is very good at doing is killing off any bacteria that may cause harm to your plants of various types, by the way. It also adds oxygen to your root system, hence hydrogen peroxide. When you use hydrogen peroxide in this way, you may see the mixture bubble, which is all of that lovely oxygen. This extra oxygen not only encourages root growth, but it also kills the pathogens responsible for the root rot. So it's essentially killing two birds with one stone. It's killing all the pathogens that cause any issues, and it's also providing additional oxygen for the roots of your plant to thrive. And there you have it. Now you know a little bit more about root rot is, how it works, how to identify it, how to remove it, and of course, how to prevent it from returning to your house plants. I really hope this video helped you out in guiding you through essentially what on earth it is and how to deal with it, because I know it's a really horrible thing that can plague plants that are even the toughest of house plants. It really doesn't matter. It can affect any type of plant. I do hope this video was helpful. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, please leave a like down below. If you'd like to see any other informational videos or content of mine, then please feel free to hit that subscribe button. That's it for this video, guys, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.